Hi, good morning and welcome to today's products and focus. So most global equity markets have rallied very strongly overnight with the US 30 managing to almost clock up 300 plus points. Uh, very strong performance now that the, uh, the Fed interest rate hike looks to be dead in 2015. Uh, many other markets are moving up higher in tandem. Japan is also ticking up, but we'll talk about that in a little second. So great session yesterday, ending towards the top end, end of its range just before that uh, 55 period SMA and uh, longer term potential resistance uh, remaining at 17,034. We are slightly retreating first thing this morning, but after yesterday's performance, that's not massively surprising. So then looking at the UK 100, uh, because we've seen such a big bounce in commodity prices and short covering, uh, we've actually had three or four days of really strong gains. We've got gain, 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 and another strong gain yesterday. It's punching up through 62.96. Again, capped by that 55 period SMA with, um, let's just say, 6,300 now acting as a potential support. It's a broken resistance now expected to act, act uh, as support with a longer term uh, potential, next potential resistance at 64.15. Other technicals relatively neutral. The MACD is going to cross the zero line in the next number of sessions. And we'll see how that goes. So, Japan, there is a two day session with the Bank of Japan. Governor Kuroda and a whole number of other policymakers and rumors are rife that Japan is quite close to starting another round of monetary stimulus, which should be good for stocks. But again, we've had four days of gains. We've had a little bit of a reversal first thing this morning, uh, trading below potential resistance at 18,300 uh, at the trading at the bottom of this range as we speak right now. But we've punched up through that trend line resistance, uh, put our head just above 18306 but I then kind of reversed the first thing this morning but I think we might get some more um, that the thing is monetary stimulus should be actually be quite good for equities because it would uh, devalue the yen but it also has a negative connotation uh, <coughs> because of the strength of the Japanese economy why do they have to do it uh, I don't think Japan really wants to do it but you, know, you never know so moving on to dollar yen uh, you can see that the yen has kind of lost a little bit of momentum uh, Obviously, the dollar hasn't exactly been getting strength post uh, non-farm payrolls, um, but with this monetary stimulus potentially coming out for Japan, that's causing a little bit of extra weakness there, and uh, dollar yen is actually just creeping above that 21 period SMA. But I think the reality is that dollar yen is a little bit boring right now, unless you're trading ultra short term. So this is a daily interval. If we just jump on to say a five minute interval for a second, and we can get a chance to look at those uh, that that kind of movement in more detail. Uh, well, it's been it's been so tight, but uh, it's been in such a narrow trading range. You could probably almost draw a line here, apart from the fact it obviously broke through there yesterday, and then there's a line at the top area right there. So that gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect for uh, for good old uh, dollar yen. Let's move on now to um, on to West Texas crude. Let me just minimize that. So West Texas crude. So you had Russia as willing to meet other oil producing countries to discuss the market, i.e. maybe cutting back on production, which is causing a bit of short term um, uh, kind of upwards momentum for, for West Texas crude. So trading above 45.85, longer term potential resistance still remains at $80. No, $50, my mistake. Um, but these candles is not really showing conviction in one direction or the other. One minute you've got a graveyard doji, next minute you've got a hammer, then you've got, well, arguably a harami, uh, and then you've not really got a lot happening so far this morning. So I don't think West Texas really knows what it's doing, but we do have uh, more economic data uh, on Wednesday uh, for the crude oil inventories to talk more about that. So gold obviously had itself a great session on Friday. Monday it's not really done a huge amount, um, and today it's pretty much sticking to potential resistance at 1137. Um, I'm surprised you're not seeing more mo movement in gold since interest rates look to be kind of dead uh, in the US for now. Um, but it's really struggled in the last couple of sessions. The tips of these candles there are indicative of the selling pressure. If we break up through 1137 with any more momentum and some conviction, then we can challenge this tip and then this tip. Uh, the fundamentals should be in gold's favor, but it's kind of interesting that it's not really taking off. So looking at euro dollar, not really doing a huge amount. Uh, I guess the dollar managed to stage late recoveries on Friday. 
and yesterday, uh, but we're not doing a huge amount today. We're trading between two moving averages, the 21 and 55 period, with one spot 11 being longer term potential support and one spot 1475 being longer term potential uh, resistance. And we're making a pattern of lower highs right here. Uh, probably we have a, a kind of a triangle formation right here. If we, if we take the tips of this and then draw like so, and then if we take the tip of here and equally draw like this, this could be a symmetrical triangle formation. In fact, I'm gonna get rid of some of this other analysis because maybe it's not so prevalent right now because there's probably not a lot of extra momentum gonna break up through these other areas. So let's just clean up the chart, make it a bit easier to look at. And that probably is not so bad. So we're either going to get a break down below uh, one spot 11, or hopefully a break above one spot 14.75. So that's Euro Dollar finishing up with GBP USD. Uh, it's looking a little bit ugly, top heavy, trading below one spot 51.85. Keeps ticking up above it, then getting pushed right back down. So that's going to be acting as potential resistance now. As uh, you can see, the tips of these candles is pretty much confirming that it is acting now as a potential resistance. One spot 51.85. Longer term potential support, one spot, 48.13. So economic data wise, we've got Halifax house price data uh, coming in at, um, that'll be around about 8 a.m. UK time. And uh, then we've got trade balance data at 1.30 UK time, um, which can be pretty important for the US. And then going on to Wednesday, we've got industrial production for Germany at 7 a.m. UK time. Uh, and then of course, we've got a crude oil inventory um, figures there on Wednesday, crude oil Wednesdays, as you would expect. And then going on to Thursday, not a huge amount. We do have the Bank of England MPC minutes. That's a big one if you're trading cable, because um, you have the voting rights, uh, there's in the, the vote how it went in regards to interest rates. Though with the state of the world affairs right now, it's probably looking pretty flat. And then we've got unemployment claims due there at 1.30 UK time as well. So as ever, guys, keep your uh, eye on the chart forum, make insights part of your layer going forward, and join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.